What is going on? What is it, Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday night. We're working, man. We are still working. We decided to come over here and get something to eat real quick. I'm here with uh, Aaron Janda from Seattle. What up, what up, what up? We're working on a big uh, crypto launch. Uh, it's gonna be huge. But anyway, um, what's up, Matt? Matt says, what's up? What's up, Charlie? Man, you guys are crazy. Fired Look at up. these guys. <laughs> crazy, enough. Jordan, what's up, you guys? Thanks so much for hanging out. Thanks for hanging out. I got something really cool to share with you. I just couldn't wait till tomorrow. We're taking a break um, until, well, we're gonna take a break for about 20 minutes and go back to the Airbnb and work. I'm trying to crank out a serious seven-figure funnel. Hopefully, hopefully it ends up being a seven-figure funnel. Um, so anyway, trying to get these guys in the two comma club. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but thanks so much for hanging out, guys. You guys are crazy. You guys are the serious entrepreneurs right there. So that's awesome. But uh, I wanted to share with you, you know, so last week, um, uh, it says, nah, Jordan and I are Aussies. Okay, what's up, man? What's up from Australia? That's cool if you guys are Aussies. But he says, but we are crazy. That's awesome. So um, I was at LAX last week uh, coming back. Uh, just a couple days ago, I was coming back. And I met some guys. Um, I met three people uh, in a restaurant, and uh, they were saying how they were at the kombucha conference. And uh, if you guys don't know kombucha, it's one of the biggest uh, things in, in uh, beverage and the beverage uh, delivery service and the beverage uh, the beverage industry. Um, uh, it's huge right now. It's a huge, huge, huge multi. It's going to be a multi-billion-dollar industry soon. Um, so there's a huge conference. Uh, Dave Kombucha speaking at it. It was huge. What's up, Mike Vasquez? And um, so anyway, um, uh, I just happened to be sitting by a business that was there. What's up, Joe? What's going on, guys? Thanks so much for hanging out with me, man. Appreciate you guys. <clears throat> and uh, and uh, I wanted to say something, you know. So I was sitting by these guys, and uh, super cool, young, you know, all in their 30s. And um, Joe says, "What's up?" <laughs> uh, let me know where you guys are uh, dialing in from, what, what country or what city you're from. It'd be awesome just to hang out for a few minutes here. Uh, I'm going to let you guys know something really, 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 really cool and special about uh, how do you know if you're an employee or an entrepreneur, or an, I'm sorry, an employee or a business owner. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is I can tell in the first minute if somebody's the owner or if they're the, an employee. Um, so I was talking to these three guys, uh, well, one, one gal and two guys. And uh, An Anuth says he's from India. What's up, brother? Good to be, good to, good to be hanging out with you, man. Thanks for dialing in. Um, and so um, uh, I was, I was uh, you know, a lot of you guys know, um, you know, I, we did a lot, uh, you know, work to I IPO um, Telenav in my 20s. IPO a SaaS company with 15.5 million subscribers and went on to sell over 350 million, or 200, sorry, it's like late, 210 million in corporate products, working for companies like AT&T, Facebook, and Amazon, and other small companies, um, smaller companies than that. Uh, Phil said, or yeah, Joe says he's from Chicago. What's up, bro? Um, and so um, he says, uh, you'll see uh, me and his boy in Orlando. Yep, you're going to see us in Orlando, bro. Come, You guys come to the Mastermind Orlando on uh, March 19th. Me, Josh Forty, and Steve Larson. Uh, it's going to be awesome. Anyway, so... Um, so what I was saying is, you know, when I met these guys, uh, they, they were asking me, like, what do I do? And I told them, you know, I was speaking uh, at, a, at a mastermind, and I was attending a mastermind and talking to uh, uh, clients who had, you know, $65 million a month. Uh, one was $20 million a month. Two huge companies, and I was working with them on business plan growth. And, uh, and this is a very small company. This company has, like, 15 employees. Uh, and I think they're even like pre-revenue or very slow revenue company. And um, and so Dennis says he's a busy man. Yep, everybody, yep, awesome Dennis. Thanks for hanging out, brother. So um, uh, so I told him, you know, like, hey man, you know, this is what I do. And I said, you know, I was speaking um, about, you know, internet sales and scaling your business online. And I said, what are you guys working on? How do you guys get distribution for your beverage company? And they said, well, we're trying to branch into online sales. And I said, and I'm thinking, okay, isn't this a cool match? So I happen to be speaking on this, and uh, you know, helped many, many eight-figure, seven-figure, you know, and more than that, companies, um, some of the biggest companies in the world, some of the some very successful entrepreneurs scale online businesses. 
And so, um, but it was interesting how they didn't take me up on anything I was saying. They were basically like, well, um, they basically tried to sell me their kombucha product. And I was like, I don't know if you just heard what I said, but you're trying to figure out how to make five bucks online. And I do that for, for like companies that make hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, I was like, well, and I'm thinking like, dude, if, if and we were just being super cool. And I was like, well, I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally show these guys exactly what to do. Like I literally would have grabbed a napkin, drew out what they need to do, told them about ClickFunnels, told them about uh, that I, you know, knew Dave, the Dave Kombucha guy, and, and told them like all this stuff, and um, and you know, uh, told them about what kind of funnel they needed and how to how to attract customers and what books to buy and I would have told them the whole thing like something that probably would have made millions and millions of dollars in a business like that literally would have made millions of dollars but and I just thought if this was an owner there's no way an owner would be sitting across the table from from me who just or anybody it doesn't matter if it's me but somebody who says all that and then they go well um, can I sell you some of my kombucha like I just think like an owner, my food's here, but um, an owner, you don't want to see what I'm eating by the way, but uh, an owner, every time you know I've been on a plane, in the airport, at a restaurant, and the owner shows up, the owners are always, they're, they're, they're opportunity seekers, they're like me and you guys, right? Like they're opportunity seekers. And so when we see somebody, we're like, we're like it's almost like being a kid playing basketball and somebody, um, somebody says they can shoot and you're like you just throw them the ball like hey dude go ahead and shoot like let's see what you got right and uh and if you can shoot then you prove yourself right and then you're on the team or you're, you're gonna play or whatever but it was just funny to me how like these guys they listened to all that and they all it was kind of a little bit of arrogance and uh but I, let me tell you i didn't play it that way i didn't i didn't come off arrogant to them i was being super cool but i was just looking at them like they don't, they, like, I know they heard me and they were asking me what I was speaking on and how we make money and all this stuff. And then they just, they didn't ask for anything. And I, I was basically like about to go into it all and tell them what they need to do. And then they tried to try and sell me their kombucha bottles. So I was like, that's weird, man. You know, and, I, and, that, and that's the difference between an employee and an owner. Is an owner is going to capitalize on opportunities and an owner is always looking for opportunities. And an owner is never gonna let their, a, a real business owner, a business owner who's gonna make it, a, 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 an entrepreneur who's gonna make it, is looking for opportunities. That's why people like Tony Robbins, books like the Bible, whatever, talk about speaking life and, and things like that. Because what you're doing, okay, when Tony Robbins talks about speaking life, being positive, verbalizing things, there's neuro-linguistic programming, all those kind of things that people talk about that entrepreneurs talk about. The reason they talk about that stuff is because you're telling, you're, you, you're verbalizing something and your brain is gonna try to figure out how do I make this happen? So what does that mean? So that means like for you, if you're struggling in your business, every single day you need to say, you know, you need to verbally say it. Don't think it, verbally say, um, you know, I'm going to be very I'm going to be a very successful entrepreneur. Or this business is going to take off, or I am going to make it, or uh, I'm one of the smartest people I know. So, like, say something. Like, you know, what I say is, um, I started. I've done this for years and years, almost probably almost ten years. I've said, um, I, I just kind of say a, pr a prayer. And for me, is I call it a prayer. Uh, but but you you can call it whatever you want. But I say like God. I verbally say it out loud. I say God, your your um, your your. What do I say? I say God, your uh, your wealth flows to me and it's circulating around me your wealth is flowing to me uh, and I'm supposed to be a blessing to the world I'm supposed to be a blessing to people that, that's actually something I physically say uh, I verbalize it and and when I say that it doesn't matter if you're religious or not but it, but this is proven like uh, UCLA MIT a lot of big schools now in the US have, have backed this up neurolinguistic programming that what happens is you are physically telling your brain it's the, your brain subconsciously will begin to look for those opportunities that you just said okay so wh what it means is you'll walk into a place like this okay 
and your brain, if you've been verbalizing it, your brain will go, maybe you need to talk to that person over there. That person might be somebody who could help you become a successful entrepreneur. Now you don't know, right? You go over there and maybe it's nobody, but it could be somebody that could be helpful. Okay, versus if you're verbalizing negativity, guys, gals, if you're verbalizing negativity, you're saying, I'm never gonna do it. I'm never gonna make it. I'm never gonna be successful. I'm never gonna sell this. My stuff's, no, I'm never gonna get a deal. I'm ne you know what I mean? If you're saying that, then when you walk into this room, guess what happens? Your brain, neuro-linguistic programming, your brain literally says, don't go talk to those people. You, you, you're not gonna be successful. You're only gonna get hurt. Things are not gonna go well. Don't, don't try to, 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 don't try to, you know, go out of your way, right? And I'm telling you, more and more, when I meet real business owners, I realize it right away that they're an owner because they're, they're looking for opportunity. And, uh, and so I just wanted to kind of like share that with you guys. I was gonna share it tomorrow, but I just wanted to share it with you tonight while we were here grabbing a quick bite uh, before we head back to the Airbnb that um, the most, I, I think one of the biggest qualities you can do as an entrepreneur is to, to speak life over yourself, over your business, to say the things that are in your heart and to verbally say them. And then when you're out there in public, when you're in a restaurant, when you're in the airport, when you're just you're at the coffee shop, um, you know, you'll notice how things start to happen. You start to meet people, connect with people, whatever. And you're like, oh, that just happens to be something that I was thinking about or I was saying or whatever. And the reason for that is is because your brain is so smart. God made your brain so smart. Your brain's going to try to figure out how to do whatever you say. You know, so... And, and uh, I, I always find it interesting, like I said, about meeting with those, uh, you know, when I met the, this kombucha, a small, very small kombucha company, I just knew I was talking to employees because, and I wasn't saying anything bad, I didn't be mean or rude, don't ever do something like that, don't, don't think you're better than them, you're not, you're just a person like they are, but, um, but you know you're talking to employees when, you know, they're, they're so narrow-minded on their job. One was a marketing manager, and one was a product manager, and one was an ops manager. You know, and that's fine. Like every company needs those people. Not saying anything bad about them, but I'm saying you guys are owners. That's why you're following me. That's why I follow you. That's why we hang out. You guys and gals are owners, and it's our job to look for opportunities. You know, working on your own, being a small business owner, those kind of things. No one's looking out for you. You, you, your friends, your, your, your you know, your, your family. Those. That's about all we got. You know, so. Um, we don't have, you know, the comfort of a big company and all the other stuff going on, you know, so, um, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta look out for each other and we gotta look for opportunities. We gotta tell, we gotta do the right thing and tell ourselves that, you know, use the way God programmed your body to, 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 you can, you know, they, they, they call it now neuro linguistic programming because you can physically tell your brain to start looking for opportunities. You want to get more leads, you want to get more opportunities, you want to make more sales, you want to become better at something. Uh, a lot of people have asked me, they said like, James, how did you do so much by, by the time you were 30? How did you do so much by the time you were 35? I'm 37 now. Dude, I, I, I did it exactly the way I'm telling you right now. I set my goal on one thing, I set it over and over and over and over and over again, and I looked for opportunities to make it happen. I grew up in a very poor minority neighborhood, and I kept telling myself, opportunity will come my way, opportunity will come my way, and guess what? One day, I went to a lunch, I was the only person, only person to go to a lunch meeting, and, and the guy putting on the event, I literally, it was me and my boss, we were the only two people to go to this event, and it had a whole bunch of chairs, like 30 people were supposed to be in the room. I was the only person, me and my boss, the only people who went, and the guy putting on the event just happened to be the CEO of a company called Telenav, which had five employees, and I ended up being the sixth employee and we, we I, I led sales across the country. We IPO'd that company. We took it, I literally took it from zero to 15.5 million subscribers. Changed my life, changed the b business, everything. And all because I kept telling myself, there is an opportunity coming my way. There is opportunity coming my way. Um, and so anyway, um, just wanted to share that with y'all. Uh, doesn't matter where you are, what country you're from, how much money you have, how much, what kind of business you have, what kind of business you don't have, what somebody said about you, what your mom said, or what your mom didn't say. It doesn't matter. It's what you say. It's what you say that matters. So anyway, appreciate you guys. Uh, what's up, Lisa? 
What's up you guys? Thanks so much for being on here and hanging out. It is late. We're gonna finish our food here and then go back to the Airbnb. Jan is already down in his. Chicken and waffles, baby. <laughs> He's got chicken and waffles. I got a little something something here, so. But uh, anyway, we're recording a whole bunch of stuff and just uh, hanging out, so. Uh, but man, we're gonna pull a late nighter tonight and then be back at it tomorrow. Um, Monday, Tuesday, I think Monday and Tuesday next week, I'm gonna have uh, another small mastermind with another small company in here. Um, we're gonna be working with Jessica Lynch. Jessica Lynch is uh, an American hero, POW, the only woman prisoner of war of all time, um, but she's now gonna be one of our clients, um, and it's gonna be super, super cool and fun. You guys can see a lot of stuff we're doing about her. She has an amazing, amazing, amazing story. Um, Iraqis kidnapped, or the Iraqis ambushed her, her battalion. Um, she was taken prisoner of war. They broke her legs. Uh, they broke her back. And she today, she walks. And she talks and, t and tells her story all over the U.S. and all over the world. She spoke at Pepsi, uh, everywhere, man. She's an amazing, amazing, amazing story. So you guys can see a lot more about Jessica coming up uh, here in the next couple weeks. So I'm happy to be hanging out with her next week. So anyway. Appreciate you guys. We're gonna go. We're gonna finish our food here and then go back to the Airbnb and knock it out. Try to work really late tonight. And uh, I will see you guys a little later. Thanks for hanging out so much. Appreciate you guys so much. And I'll talk to you soon. I'll make sure I reply to everybody. Okay. Take it easy, guys. Have a good night.